We're Good here. evening. This is Tuesday, uh, January 26, 2021, meeting of the Town of Berlin Planning Board. As a preliminary matter, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some of the attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Anything you should decide to screen share on your computer or anything you broadcast uh, will be captured and recorded. This is Tom Sanford, Chair of the Planning Board. Permit me to confirm that all the members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me prior to me calling the meeting to order. Planning Board members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Jay Teach. Here. Timothy Wheeler. Here. Carolyn McDonald. Here. Tom Sanford, here. Uh, anticipated speakers on the agenda will be Mark. We'll call him in when we elevate him. With a quorum of the board present, I call this meeting to order at 7.37 p.m. Tuesday, January 26th, 2021. This open meeting of the planning board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth of Mass due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. Specific information and general guidelines for the remote participation by members of the public can be found on the Town of Berlin website. The governor's order suspends the requirement of open meeting law to have all meetings held in a publicly accessible physical location and allows and encourages us to, to participate remotely. For this meeting, the planning board is convening using the Zoom platform as posted on the agenda, which includes links for the public to join this meeting. Meeting ground rules. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I'll invite each board member by name to provide any comment, questions, penetrating insights, and or motions. Please hold all your insights until your name is called. Board members and speakers on the agenda, Please remember to mute your phone or your computer when you're not speaking. Please speak, speak clearly to ensure accurate minutes are recorded. For any response, please wait until you are yielded the floor and state your name before speaking. If board members wish to engage in conversation with each other, please do so through me to avoid multiple conversations at the same time. Lastly, please note that each vote in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Thank you all for your understanding and cooperation. Okay. I will entertain a motion that we- um, I move that we accept the minutes of uh, January 12th. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I will ask for a vote by roll call. Jay Teach. Aye. Uh, Carolyn McDonald. Aye. Tom Sanford, aye. Tim Wheeler, aye. <laughs> Ms. Camp Ms. Campbell says you won't let her in. She's not, I don't see her. I see Eloise and Mark. You're not showing up on our screen. You went to the planning board link that you got from the, from the uh, inspector's office? She may not have got that email. Huh. Well, we're in it. Let me send you. Um, she could do it through the town of Berlin's website too. I would be happy to let her in if I could find her. Well, we can go on while we're waiting. The, uh, the only pieces of mail that we got, um, other than the typical notices that we get all the time, um, we have a, um, an invoice from Gatehouse Media for the um, 
posting of the hearing notices we never had the hearing for. <laughs> Excellent. P.S. Yeah, the one that was canceled. <laughs> uh, so we owe them $187.16. So um, need a motion. A, yeah. Can we make a motion to pay that? So moved. Uh, second. Second. Excellent. Thank you. Motion uh, made and seconded to pay Gatehouse Media the sum of 187.16 for public hearing notices. Um, I think there were 11.6 and 11.28. So by roll call vote, I would ask you to vote on the motion. Jay Teach. All right. You're going to hang up? Uh, Carolyn McDonald. Aye. Tom Sampit, aye. Timothy Wheeler? Aye. She okay. may show up in a minute, Carolyn. Okay. okay. I'll look out for her. So While I'm thinking about it, Tom, do you yeah. have what you read at the beginning of the meeting electronically? I do not, but I probably, I, it's typed, so I must have it someplace. If Do you have it for, for Conservation Commission, Carolyn? I don't, but I bet John does. But I think it's also, isn't it on our page oh, on My Town Government? Yeah, that something? may be true. I'll dig it up there. Okay. Not, okay. I can send you a copy of it tomorrow. If you find it, that'd yeah. be great because I'm I gotta read something for CPA and I don't. So yeah. <laughs> okay. we don't want to yeah. get in Yeah, trouble. actually, Tim, when you get something, if you can also send it to me because I have to post it on my town government for CPI. Okay. Okay. I got, actually, I think this came from um, the selectman and I got, had to tail it. So no biggie. Uh, I, I, it's typed, so I, I definitely did it. Somewhere. Um, yeah. I just got to find out what I do with it. Um, the other thing was the, there was three, um, Basically, three, you can't really see it, three um, uh, accounts that we have, planning board accounts. So we were asked to confirm that what we did spend or didn't spend is accurate. Um, they look accurate, so I'll sign on the behalf of the planning board if everybody's okay with that and send that back. The only other piece that we got was, um, and we could probably, we could, we could talk about it now we have time. Um, Janet's was, here. Janet's in? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, was the piece, we got notification as well as um, Conservation Commission, Recreation, uh, and the Selectmen about the uh, Web Joe property and being offered for sale and right of first refusal. I don't think there's anything that we need to do for taking action. I mean, it's just more of information for us, the fact that they're going to sell that piece of property if the town doesn't exercise. Molly sent a note around after that and said, in her records, it didn't appear to be under 61A anymore. So the question might be moot, but. Okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Well, that was there. So we had, like I said, there was a bunch of other public hearing notices from various towns around us, typical stuff, nothing worth noteworthy. <laughs> so. That's about it. Um, Did you guys the, vote? If there's any, sorry, I can't hear. I can't yeah. hear you. You can hear me? You hear me now? Yes. That's so weird. Okay. Um, I sent a draft of the indoor report around. Mm -hmm. yep. I got good comments back from Tim. A little bit from you, Tom. Does everybody else read it? Any anything else want to add or edit? I'm good with it. It was great. I was yeah. off by a week. It's going to be the first report I've ever written. In. There you go. In my <laughs> life. I think it's due by the 29th. I don't think you're actually late. I think they may have told you a week before. They well, I don't know what before. happened, but as a result, <laughs> like I can send it tomorrow and I'll be early, which it's, I've never done that before. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> are you going to, are you going to send it to the select board? Who do I send it to? Margaret or? I'd send it to Margaret, yeah, if you yeah. don't mind. Can you send sure, it on yeah. our behalf? Yep. Thank you. No problem. That'd be excellent. 
Um, okay, so we're we should be if you could elevate Mark for us, um, we could take care of this A and R. Yep, and then there's someone also named Ron. Uh, okay. Here comes Mark. Uh, as soon as he unmutes. There you go. There you go. Hello. There it is. Hi. Hi, Mark. Uh, is someone named Ron here with you as well? Mark? No. No. Okay. All right. It's not Ron Vavruska, is it? <laughs> uh, it just says Ron. There is no. No way to know unless, do you want me to allow him to talk? Tom? Can he raised his hand? No. Nope. Okay. Then if he raises his hand, then we'll, we'll, we'll ask, you know, we'll invite him to elevate him. Oh, but, there goes the hand. Okay. Then All right. If you would elevate him, please. I'm just going to allow him to talk for the moment. Correct. Thank you. Yes. Can you hear me? Hey, it is Ron. Ron. Yes, I've been invited by the chairman to get a few laughs. There you go. Yes, I did invite you to stop by for a few laughs. Yeah, right. So here, here I am. I was just listening to the governor, and now I'm, now I'm here listening to this. Now I'm listening to the important planning board. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Are you on your computer, Ron? Can you see us? Yes, I can see you clearly. Can you see me? No. You have, you have to turn your camera uh, on. Oh, we're... Raise hand camera. There must be some. All right. So over in the left hand corner, when you move your mouse. Here, yeah, all I got is a microphone. Oh, hmm. oh, that's because I need to elevate you. Hold oh, on. Oh, I want to be elevated. I know. Yes. <laughs> there you go. So you should be able to do it. Ah, uh, here we go. Here I am, folks. There you go. Good, Good to see you, Ron. Just like, just like the old days. Just... That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so can we go back to Mark? Sorry about that, Mark. It was a little no problem. Diverted. No problem. So can can you explain the plan a little bit to us? And then um, we I've sent the plan around. Everybody should have gotten a PDF copy of it. Um, by way of introduction, it's a, a parcel an a &R parcel on Car Road. And if you could take it from there, Mark, and explain a little bit about it and what it's uh, what you were trying to do. And um, then we'll open it up for questions. Okay. Sounds good. Thank Sounds you. good. The parcel right on Car Road, uh, 19 Car Road. Um, been in the family for a while. And the mother uh, realized she had enough acreage and frontage to uh, break off a lot and give it to her daughter. So her, her daughter could buy, uh, build a modest home and uh, live in Berlin. So um, I entered into a contract with her to to get the uh, property approved, the A and R approved, and septic approved, and we uh, approved out a um, reserve system on the original parcel for the main house, and then we also found a septic location primary and reserve for the second lot. And then Dillis and Ducharme did the uh, survey, topography, everything everything necessary to uh, produce the plan that you see in front of you right now. And then uh, obviously after the approval of this, we would be seeking a uh, septic plan approval and then proceed with the construction of the daughter's home. Is there any questions from board members? Mark, I have a question for you. Sure. On lot 2A, yeah. if I look at where the, the 50 foot offset from the house establishes the side bound, right? From the existing house to the lot line. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the side bound. So if I add up the frontage that's there, I have 64.19, 111.57, and you need the 40 feet to make the 200. Yeah, there's a note, there's a note somewhere on here that I saw that says the, uh, the frontage on that lot is uh, 
on 2A, it says as 200 feet of frontage, and on 1A, it says as 227.78 feet of frontage. Okay, help me out. How do I get to 200 feet? Can you add it up for me? Um, Tom, there's a, is there a 24 foot parcel? I mean, a section there is. in addition to the 111 and the. Yeah, there is. Isn't that part of lot 2A? Tom, can you share it on your screen? Um, no, I can't. All right. Sorry. Um, there's, I would a, agree. there's a 24 I would... foot easement, right? There yeah, is a... easement. Are you? That's included in the lot. But if that's the case, then the lot line is drawn from the uh, 50 feet from the existing home. That's what I was trying to understand. Oh, there's a, there's a diagonal line, line in there. There's, there's a 58 foot diagonal line. Did you see that? Yeah. That brings it back, that adds that easement back into the 2A property. Okay. So you're saying that that diagonal 58 58.82 from that point 53.59 into the, so basically they're, they're, they're doing a jog at that to create the furniture. Okay. Correct. Right. Yeah. I yeah. get it. Yeah. And the shed would be non-conforming, but would be removed at a later date. Actually, the shed might not be non because I don't think sheds comply. I don't think sheds have to be 20 feet from a, a lot line to that. Either way, it's a, there's a dog kennel that they no longer use. So, you know, on the locust map, I don't think it shows the... Uh, it, that's map. what started the confusion for me was that it didn't show any of the you yeah. know, lot line. And I just, I, until you pointed it out, I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's not as dark as the other lines. Is there any other comments from any of the board members? Mm. I was looking at our checklist. We seem to have all the checks boxes checked. Right. Mark, it's not going to be more than 35 feet high, right? No, no. It's a, it's a, uh, I'll call it a cape. It's a cape with a uh, uh, full Bless. shed door. Front and full shed dormer in the back, uh, approximately 1,568 feet. So you'll have, uh, it'll be less than 24 feet tall, probably. According to our check sheet here, a pool shed, one story, less than 20 square feet, <clears throat> rear setback is 20 feet. Oh, no, I was just talking about the house. That yeah, I know. I was just yeah. moving on to another. Yeah. I was reading our checklist. Okay. So the uh, lots have the proper frontage, the proper acreage. And if there's no other comments, then um, I'll ask you to, I'll entertain a motion that we sign this A&R. Does somebody want to make a motion? Nobody? I think Tim is shut off. Tim, you're muted. muted. He's no. trying to make a motion, but we can't hear. He's, he's, I'm trying to find the right damn screen so I can. <laughs> I, I, I had the plan on my screen and I couldn't get back to the mute button. Oh, okay. Now I have to find my way back to the plan so I can read everything off of it and turn it sideways and all that. Oh, stuff. sorry. Just a minute. I have it here if you want. I'll find my way back. I move that we approve a plan drawn by Dillison Roy, dated January 18th, it looks like 2021. Correct. Mark, where's your name on here? I'm doing it for uh, Maureen. A. Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Maureen and Leonard 
Maureen A. Leonard, 19 yeah. Car Road. Okay. Yeah. Um, showing the creation of lot 1A and 2A. Book and page. I got this. You want me to read it? You got book and page? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So it's uh, book 7534, page 57, book 8077, page 278, book 9193, page 153. Assessor's map 24, parcel number 39. Approval under the subdivision control are not required. Okay, wait a second. Is that, is that on the drawing? It is. All right. We'll get it from there. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I got a motion made and seconded. Um, and I need to call a roll call vote to approve the plan as presented. Hey, teach. Aye. Timothy Wheeler. Aye. Carolyn McDonald. Aye. Janet Campbell. Aye. And Tom Sanford. Aye. The plan carries unanimously. So this is the creation of two lots. This is the where I was um, unable to give Mark an answer on how much. Right. So it's creation of two lots. What's the fee schedule for us? Is it in the subdivision? Ron. Ron remembers. <laughs> <laughs> probably does. Crash is on. It's probably 50 for the first lot and what, 25 for the second? So that was my, lot. yeah, that was my <laughs> recollection. My memory's fading. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> Okay, so um, Mark, you gave us a form A with this, but uh, I need to check. So you've got to make out a check for 75 bucks. Not a problem. And we'll get the plan circulated around and signed. I'll take it around and have everybody sign it. <clears throat> and then um, we'll get it back. I'll probably have, where's the best place to, maybe I can drop it off uh, to you on Saturday. Are you around on Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Why don't I get the signatures first, and then I'll give you a, a call, and and um, and then we can meet up, and I can uh, you can give me the check. I'll give you the mylar, the signed mylar. How's Sounds that? good. Sounds okay. fantastic. Is that okay with everybody else? And Jay, you around? Or are you still going to be in Florida? No, I'm not going to be back till uh, next Tuesday. Okay. Well, I we'll have to forego your signature then. All right. Take it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> Why is this? I, I hope that's not recorded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Maybe I can delegate Ron to sign for me. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Honorary hey, give him your proxy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think that takes care of um, the ANR. Great. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank See you. you Mark. All right. Have a good night, you guys. Yep. yep. Take care. All right. Okay. Yep. You're right, it was good for lifts. Right. I just listened to the governor. He said it made it easy to get rid of restrictive bylaws. And we restrict we restrict the zoning so we can have more housing. Yeah, uh, hmm. yeah 50% vote, right? Yeah. Got, you get any more information on that? How are you going to handle it? I mean, it's. Some some uh, it's lot lines, and then maybe you got some bylaws like uh, the zoning bylaws that has to do with uh, businesses and how many people can be in the business. That that wouldn't have to, that would wouldn't work under the fifty percent. You still need two thirds, but it's, but lot size that that would go under the fifty percent. That's the way I see it. We used to have people living in chicken coops in town. Well, <laughs> I bought a house where they, they were living in the basement. They would sell schools without houses, too. Right. I know, I went to them. <laughs> I know. <laughs>
Okay, so the next um, item that's on the agenda was, um, do we need to have any more discussion or do we need to talk about the um, um, warrants that we want to put, or the articles that we want to put on the town warrant for the annual town meeting? And then when we should probably hold our public hearings? That's right, I tuned in for it. There you go. I think last time we met, I said I'd send around the articles that we voted on last time, which right. you all received because I didn't send them. So <laughs> uh, if I do that, we meet, uh, we meet before the warrant closes. Yes. So we'll have a shot to vote to submit those again if we don't want to modify any of them. So I'll, I'll, I will do that this time. How many uh, articles do you have? Four, right? Yeah, I think it's four. Can you say basic topic or subject of the articles? It's what we didn't vote on last year. Do you know what the date was on the meeting? Because I, I put them in the minutes, but the problem is I don't know how to find things because you have to know what date. Let so me. It uh, would have been in October if the hearings were scheduled for, if the you said the dates that the notices were published were early November. That's correct. So it would have been one of the two meetings in October, most likely. Like how I figured that out? <laughs> I, mean, I probably have a copy of them. Well, October 13th, we talked about the warrant articles for Riverbridge. But that's not the list of ours. That's a opponent driven one, right? Right. So that's not the right date. Right, they were, ZBA had some wording change that they wanted for clarification. I know that was one of them. We can also go back and look through the YouTube videos. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Is that the one with the zoning board didn't know what gross vehicle weight meant? Right. Excellent. <laughs> Wasn't October. It might have been September. That's the one we had some arc fossils to. Oh, here we are. Yeah, um, there were a ton <laughs> of arc parcels. Yep. Well, I have a list here. That we were we were reviewing them in September, and there were three, six. There were eight of them, and we picked ones we were going to continue with and crossed off the other ones. Do you want to see that? Well, the first one we talked about was principal use table regulations, uh, residential care facility, not more than six patients. In the limited business district. Do you recall that? Yeah, so number one was to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw section 320 table of principal uses, deleting the current table entry residential care facility for not more than six patients and replacing it with the following. And we just basically said it was allowed SR special permit and site plan approval. This change would allow residential care facilities for not more than six patients in the limited business district and require a special permit in the residential and agricultural multiple dwelling districts. Then number two was um, to see if the town will amend the vote taken to create the economic development committee. This change would make the planning board the sole appointing authority for the economic development committee. And then the third was to see if the town will amend action to adopt the scenic roads designation article 34 
this change would allow the selectmen to include, and we got turned down on that. We can't do that one. <laughs> and the next one was um, to see if the town will amend the town of Berlin zoning map by adding the following parcels to the arc zone. And that's a long, long list. We'll have to decide whether that they want to contend with that at a COVID meeting or not. Number five was to see if the town will amend the zoning bylaw home-based contracting business. The business must be owned and operated by a resident of the dwelling. This change would require a home-based contracting business owner in the residential agricultural district to reside on the property. Number six was to see if the town will amend the zoning bylaw table of home-based contracting business by adding a, as registered with the DMV after every instance of gross vehicle weight change um, would clarify the means of determining gross vehicle weight for vehicles operating as part of a home-based contracting business. Eight was to see if the town will amend the zoning bylaw in-law apartments maximum size by adding, including any proposed addition or modification after total floor area. This change would allow any proposed square footage to be included in the calculation for total floor area of a dwelling in which an in-law apartment is proposed. Nine was to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw section 710 common driveways by adding a new section. This change would allow the planning board to review modifications to a common driveway that are proposed after the initial layout has been accepted and provides for a public hearing if the changes changes deemed substantial. And then to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw in regard to uh, the limiting the number of marijuana establishments. Some of these we did, didn't we? Yeah. Did we do marijuana at the annual last year? I think we put that for the special that didn't ever wind up happening. Didn't happen. So. I'll, I'm going to send all these to everybody right now. I'll send them to you too, Ron. Mm -hmm. Keep up on it. <laughs> and then I'll check with uh, the selectman's office and Margaret and figure out which ones we've, Want to we've actually already right. done. We did do some. We did right. Do some. So I. Sorry. It did come. It did come up. I think at the last meeting. I think it was this meeting. They're starting to run together now. Um, <laughs> we were. We, there was a question, or I had a question as to whether um, articles for the special fall town meeting needed to be resubmitted, or whether they were in limbo, or what was happening. I guess the warrant was never issued. So there, anything that we thought we had on for the fall that we still want, we, we will need to put on again. Good. Right. And then we're still going to still have to hold a hearing. Correct. Yep. So. Sometime in April. So in, in September, we picked the Marijuana, scenic roadway, home based contracting, living on the property, gross vehicle weight, and common driveways. And we X to the parcels to be changed to ag residential square foot of dwelling in Belong apartments and number of retail marijuana establishments in town. Oh, huh. But that was September. So that's maybe. Yeah. I mean, we can't keep pushing them off, so. Yeah. What's okay. happening with the uh, townhouses? With I'm the closer. what? The <clears throat> Riverbridge townhouse proposal. Any news? Where they wanted to put it in place of the. I, they haven't said anything. I'm going to talk to Chris next week. About, well, I sent him the updated plan from Roberta and he wanted to talk about that. So I said, okay. So I, I'll ask him what their plans are. 
Yeah. Can I ask what the updated plan from Roberta is? Say that again. What is the updated plan from Roberta? I think I sent it to everybody, didn't I? Yeah. You did. Yep. Yeah. In the report, right? Yeah. The okay. report from Roberta Cameron on uh, Riverbridge, okay. yeah. right. Janet. Did you get it? Yes. Okay. It's okay if I post that on the website, right? On the part, yep. part of the website. Basically what we thought. It's basically follows what she had put in the draft in the fall. Yeah. So. How does that, how does a decision get made on the ambulance issue? Like where's that going? The town doesn't want them to do it. Um, yeah. And the town has the responsibility to cover properties. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they'll have to be a decision other than removing that, that responsibility from the development agreement at a town meeting. Okay. Which I'm sure they're happy to do. Wasn't there was also a proposal to upgrade to ALS, right? Is that, that's not related. So because CENIs were earmarked to um, pay $100,000 on the 1st of November, the, the hope was that that money, because it was to enhance public safety, would be used to push along the conversion over to ALS. Oh, I see. But that hasn't been paid. Hmm. Does, does that require a town meeting vote? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. It's kind of a complicated decision. The whole ambulance business is crazy, competitive. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. So they haven't, they haven't paid the hundred thousand and Solomon Pond Mall hasn't paid the 50,000 to conservation. Correct. They only have what, four more years to pay anyway, right? So. It might be six, but is it four now? Well, well they, five, they, op five they opened in 96. Business. Yeah, okay. they opened in 96. So yeah, it'd be f another five after this year. Right. But they haven't paid. Which is the first time they haven't paid. So, right. and they haven't even communicated about it, to my the best of my knowledge. Yeah, that's what I understood. Yeah. That's not good. No, I mean, maybe the town wants to say, look, we understand, you know, skip this year and add it on to the end or something like that, just so we get it. And you add it on to the end, you're not going to get it. Well, they have an obligation. I, I can understand why they're in a hard position. Um, if they're paying their taxes, Jeez, maybe we, maybe we want to give them a break, you know. Yeah, but some communication yes. would, is the better, the best way to handle that. Yep. On their part. Yep. Is that it for those for the articles? That's it, I think. For the articles, yeah. Yep. Until we. Figure out what we're going to do. Unless we want something new that we haven't thought of yet. <laughs> hey, how, how's that River Bridge, River Bridge Apartments coming along? I, I went there a few times back in the fall to, to the sales office just to poke around, see what it looked like. The door's always been locked. I, I went during the week, I said, ah, go on a Saturday, probably have things open on Saturday. Nobody's there. 
have they, have they, they must have seen they must have seen you coming maybe <laughs> <laughs> has it been since march uh i went there, to school like about uh yeah so they're probably not taking walk-ins just because of like someone, yeah it might be yeah but they didn't have a sign up for that you think that's like walking with a mask or something I mean, they're in the business of renting apartments, and if they don't let people come in to rent apartments, yeah. well, what kind of car are you driving around? <laughs> <laughs> They've rented about what sixty something percent, Ron. Sixty percent, okay. And uh, there are there are less than five school age kids. Oh. Huh. There may be a dozen or so preschool kids. They, uh, a significant number of people are from out of the region entirely, other states. And a surprising number were first time renters. Really? Yeah, oh. she was, um, Rebecca is her name, and and uh, she said, "I'm really surprised how many of these people are renting for the first time anywhere." You know, I mean, that might only be half a dozen, but it was a a number that was greater than what she was used to, sure. um, given and particularly given the the rental rates. So uh, she was surprised at that. But they're generally pleased with their numbers. I was pleased with the school age children thing. I yeah. mean, we we had estimated much more than that. I forget what the number was, but do, do yeah. you recall? Like 30, 30 or 32, we estimated originally. So way, way below that. Yeah, and she wasn't surprised at that. She said, these are one and two bedroom apartments. You know, it's, you're not going to see a lot of kids in her mind anyway. So she, she worked up as the manager over in a development in Hudson for quite a while that had a similar number of units. Her name is Rebecca, I think, Potash. Potash? Yeah. Oh. I haven't met her. I mean, I've just talked to her on the phone and emailed her. I'm trying to get information, but she was very responsive and said she really eager to work with the town and stuff. So, well, the only one that would have that many units would be like the one that's up over on Old Central. Right. That's what I was thinking. Because the only other one, I mean, Helen's apartments would up in Manning Street, but that's that's not nearly that no. much. You well, got, the one that was just rent. You can't hear you. <clears throat> there was one that was just getting rented recently. It's called the Matrix. It's pretty big. It's very similar. Yeah, right? This was before that. What, before what about that Tom? What about the one on Lower Main Street there um, after the shell? No, there's only about fifty. Yeah, it's not very big. That's that's housing above the commercial on the first floor. Oh 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 yeah yeah yeah. The I, Esplanade. The Esplanade yeah. But that, those are condos. Are over 55, or they started out as yeah, over, they're over. They are over 55. Okay. Yeah, right. still, okay. I know there was there were there was a, a movement they were to trying try to get away pull, them from of, pull them out of 50 over 55 because they were complaining they couldn't rent them. Right. Huh. But the people that were in there fought it. Yeah, and the town didn't want to change that designation either. So I don't know if it went anywhere. Yeah, I don't know if that was the one or not. But anyway. She's she's familiar with the area um, to some degree, so that's helpful. Cool. Awesome. So the only other thing in the agenda isn't until uh, eight thirty, and that was the update from conservation. Right. So John's actually here. Okay. If it, I don't know if you. Um, you know, care if we start early? I don't. All right. Okay, I'm be... going to I'm going to be signing off. Goodbye, it's Ron. It's always fun so to see good, you, Ron. Good to know that the playing board's still in good hands.
<laughs> Visit anytime. Okay, thank you. Bye. 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 All right, I'm promoting John now. Hey, John. Oh, you're muted. Can you hear me now? There he is. Yep. Okay. So, are you um, are you indeed driving? Yeah, I'm in my car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> welcome john well thank you very much thanks for having us you're welcome because i count carolyn too so, you know. i know i'm i'm should i like change hats here yeah. which which hat do you want me to wear right <laughs> now advisors like off like this and then you exactly. like <laughs> this is my conservation side my planning board side exactly <laughs> um okay so can you give us a little um, high level, you know, where you are and what you're doing? And we, we uh, uh, Carolyn shared around the, um, the proposal to us um, and we had a chance to read through it, but if you would like to give us the highlights and the elevator pitch, we'd be more than happy to listen to what you have to say. Thank you very much. So um, the, Conservation Commission over the years has been trying to get a municipal bylaw passed. And th this is our latest effort. Um, this is a completely redone bylaw. It's actually based on uh, a template that's provided by the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions um, that was drawn up by a bunch of volunteer lawyers that are associated with uh, conservation commissions. Um, and then we added a bunch of stuff that was more quite specific to Berlin. So, you know, the first question is, you know, why do this? Um, you know, you know, because the, the, you know, why have something in addition to the Wetlands Protection Act? Um, and the reason is that there's some holes in the Wetlands Protection Act with respect to um, some specific concerns that, you know, towns and cities or municipalities deal with. Um, is it, you know, 60% of the municipalities in Massachusetts have their own municipal bylaw, you know, just to address this. And, you know, the number keeps growing. Yeah, even Boston has its own municipal bylaw. Um, and, you know, so, it, you know, let me just sort of give a summary. So the, it's a long document and for, you know, for lawyerly reasons, you know, a lot of it is somewhat repetitious um, that, you know, of the original Wetlands Protection Act. But so the, the highlights are basically this. Um, the, you know, one of the things it does is it codifies, it puts into law the, the longstanding 25 foot no touch policy that's been with the Conservation Commission. Um, through the appeals process with the Department of Environmental Protection, this, this it was determined that this policy doesn't really have any teeth. So, um, you know, th this would make sure that it has teeth, that it's something that has to be respected. Um, if you would like me to talk about why we would even have a 25 no foot, no touch policy, I could do that. Um, this bylaw also adds some specific protection to vernal pools. Uh, you know, vernal pools are an important, uh, environmental ecological aspect of the geography of the town and of Massachusetts. Um, the, currently, there's no protection of vernal pools um, that aren't part of a larger wetland. So we thought people thought Unless that was pretty Unless they're important. individually certified. Unless they're already certified. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, the bylaw specifically does not protect what's called uh, isolated land subject to flooding, you know, sort of like bodies of water that aren't either ponds or vernal pools that are temporary. Um, and that was put in there because some of the developers were concerned that were being, you know, the prior bylaws that were presented to the town were being too restrictive and, you know, and um, permitted activity. Um, then, you know, there's some couple of little things like setting up a, what's a 53G, which allows us to collect money up front from large contractors you know, for large, large projects to pay for um, 
the environmental monitors for the projects just they don't get um, short shrift because that has happened in the past. Um, there's the ability to sort of allow us to, you know, roll over the meeting to further meetings without asking for permission if we don't have enough facts, sort of minor things. Um, one more significant thing is that it allows us to impose fines. Um, now, this is important just to get um, scoff laws to act. We, there's been situations where, um, you know, everybody agrees that there's been a wetlands violation. And everybody agrees that it needs to be addressed. Everybody agrees on what the methods of addressing it should be, what the mitigation, mitigation plan should be, but then nothing happens. Um, and, you know, the people basically the way the system is right now, they can just drag their feet indefinitely. Then we can try to get the DEP or even um, the EPA involved, but that takes time and you know the resources are limited and it slows it down even more. So the idea is that we would just have the ability to impose fines just to get people moving. Because um, most people, if they know that fines will be imposed, will stop dragging their feet. Um, we have two active cases now where this is going on. You know, where everybody agrees there's a problem, including the property owner, but you know, people just drag their feet because they can. Um, another aspect of this bylaw is it allows us to, uh, uh, you know, get a few extra fees going, um, and this would help sort of support some of the administrative work that we do. Um, and I'm in the car, so I can't look at any cheat sheets. Am I missing anything, Carolyn? Did you say? I, you know, th that's really the. Um... I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, intermittent streams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. protects intermittent right. streams too. Right. So it, the, the intermittent stream thing is sort of an, another one that was sort of a thorn in the side of the commission from years past. This actually, um, where, so an intermittent stream is a stream that doesn't flow year round. Um, they're usually pretty ecologically important, um, but they're not protected at all if they're not directly connected with a wetland. Um, and, you know, th there's been, there was one case where a, pr a pretty, it's a perennial stream. And it was during a period of drought and some right. sneaky guy got it declared intermittent, which you can do. Um, you ha only have to show, to you only have four to days. show it dry four days in the year. Doesn't have to be four consecutive days. Doesn't it just when, four when days? When there's not a when there's not a drought, um, a declared drought, right? And, what and there happened was a there, yeah, yeah, there was a drought ahead. declared like from <laughs> Worcester West, but not in Berlin. It was right so up it, to the edge of Berlin. Right. It really was a drought year, but yeah. <laughs> so again, what's important is that to, to recognize is this doesn't mean that. No one could do anything anywhere near intermittent stream, for example. It's just that the Conservation Commission needs to get involved to make sure that like no environmental damage is being done. So it doesn't mean, you know, we're, we won't permit the work or prevent the work. It's just that we want to make sure the work is done correctly so that it doesn't screw up the groundwater, the freshwater, the stormwater management stuff and all that kind of things. We, we just want to make sure that, you know, the town continues to function well ge geographically and environmentally. So that's what that's all about. And this just gives us some extra mm -hmm. tools to do that. Yeah. So we've tried to craft this to sort of mm -hmm. like, you know, strike a, you know, a sort of a moderate tone mm -hmm. between you know, so we, it's not too restrictive, but it hits the points that we're most mm -hmm. worried about from the, you know, from an environmental or conservation point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so we're trying to get around and make sure we get everybody's feedback mm -hmm. and um, see if we can get this thing passed. Mm -hmm. So that's my spiel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Questions? Mm -hmm. One topic I've heard discussed mm -hmm. is that um, if you have a disagreement with a decision by the local conservation commission, by having our own bylaw 
instead of going to the DEP, you end up having to go to the court, the Superior Court, right? Funny you should say that, because Carolyn and I were just talking about that earlier, uh, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. So, um, so I did a little, we talked about it as a concern. Um, so the issue is that um, legally, you know, a Wetland Protection Act is legally appealed to the DEP, but, you know, town bylaws are appealed to the court. It's usually the, you know, the local superior court might go to the land court. Um, and that just sounds like annoying. So I did a little more research about this and it turns out that we may have the ability to set up a, a separate, like an intermediate appeals process where we could have an arbitrator, potentially a, a binding arbitrator step in and resolve the dispute. Um, th so I, I, I just learned of this. So I have to do a little research on my conservation day, which is tomorrow. And I'm going to start by contacting the MACC and see what you know what they know about it, what other communities have done, because that would be that would make sense. Again, we don't really want to cause a lot of trouble. We just want to make sure that the environment in Berlin is protected, you know, or at least looked after. So yes, so that is something we may in, add into this bylaw is would be an adju adjudication clause. It would be under the appeals clause. This, uh, section which is down towards the end of the document right so yeah so if legally that is something we can do we have no problem adding an intermediary step in before it goes to court yeah that would be good because i think one of the dangers of um adding this bylaw is as i've been learning more from the <clears throat> the cpm rt meetings with Oh, yeah. stay close. Stay close to your computer. All right. <laughs> I went to I went to a really interesting open space bylaw um, meeting at the at our last annual um, central mass planning seminar. And one of the one of the things that's important if you want to be able to attract developers to do projects that you want in the way that you want, there, there's a variety of things you do to make the town uh, desirable. To, to build in and not have the developers run in the other direction. And, and one of them is having defined, having as much as possible by right, and then having defined criteria and processes for dealing with uncertainties, right? So if, I mean, I think there's a lot of gray areas in, the, in, in this bylaw, like what's a vernal pool, for example? You know, it's not oh. black or white. No, that's actually well, no, there is. Fairly, it's under yeah. definitions. If you look, if you look down the document a little bit, this is under definitions. It defines it pretty clearly, and um, it's very clearly defined in the Wetlands Protection Act. Yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. No, that uh, yeah. Anything that well, meets I mean, it that says, criteria it says is square probably. Feet. It, it says square feet or cubic feet of water. Two hundred. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not a very big. It's like a less than 20 by 20 foot, six inch deep little pool that gets created, right? I don't know, I, I guess my point is it, there's there's a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of judgment involved. And, and um, if the risk is, you know, that you can't get to agreement with the conservation. Come in closer. If the risk is that you can't, um, come to agreement with the conservation commission in town, if you have to go to land court or something, it makes it something that you might find people shying away from, so. Correct. And right. again, just to be clear, you know, if, if there's a vernal pool, it doesn't mean we shut down a quad quadrant of the town. It's more, we don't want them to fill it in, you know, or to like- put Build up, up to the edge of it. Yeah, I mean, just like, right. Just yeah. sort of a compromise, you know. Um, so, right. you know, and I, I think, you know, people, once they understand what's going on, can be accepting of that, you know. I, you right, know, because so the other thing. We're not trying to shut down development. Right? right. The other thing that, specifically the vernal pool clause, it says that 
um, a vernal pool that's not part of a larger wetland system. If it's, a, if it's part of a larger wetland system, it falls under the Wetlands Protection Act anyway. But mm -hmm. if it's isolated land subject to flooding that also um, harbors spring meets breeding criteria species, for it, yeah. right, that meets the criteria for a vernal pool, it makes 100 feet off of each side of that jurisdictional which means you come in to the Conservation Commission, you say what you plan to do, and the Conservation Commission gets to put conditions under which that work happens. You know, like right. erosion control. Uh, I mean, mostly it's, it would be erosion control, but you can't go right up to the edge of it, which you can right now under the Wetlands Protection Act, if it's- Oh, you can uh, fill it in right now. You can fill uh, it in. You, yeah. you can fill it in. If it's if it's not connected with a wetland, they, they can fill it in. They can just that, that's true. If it's in. not a certified vernal pool. And the if problem it's not a certified with, pool, yeah, they can just right. fill it and in. And the problem with from the town from the commission standpoint of it a uh, vernal pool not being certified or not being able to certify a vernal pool is most of them are on private property. So you can't go on to someone's private property to see if there's fairy shrimp and wood frog eggs. So um, the, this is kind of our way of um, protecting those, whether they're certified or not. But it doesn't mean you that you can't do the work. It just means just like with work up next to wetlands that it becomes jurisdictional and you have to tell the conservation commission what you're doing and they issue a permit with conditions under which the work gets done right so i was i was just trying to look at how many of the properties i own would be impacted by going 200 100 foot no touch zones and there are no it's a 25 foot no touch or that's the uh, setback right it it's not it's not a setback either it just makes it jurisdictional that's all it does it doesn't say that you can't do any work within that 100 feet or the 200 feet depending on okay. what body it just means that you have to come before conservation and say this is the work that's going on Right, but that's that's what I was my comment about by right versus uh, a decision that's unpredictable, right? <clears throat> so you you if you're considering buying a piece of property, and <clears throat> we have a we have a 200 foot <clears throat> we have a 200 foot um, <clears throat> uh, minimum <clears throat> buffer zone. Well, no, it's, it's the uh, the lot tonight. Come in. <clears throat> Can't hear you. I'm sorry. 200 foot frontage is on this thing. You, 200 foot frontage, you mean? 200 foot frontage. And if there happens to be a stream on one side of your property, you can't build within 200 feet. So you basically can't build. That's not property. true, though. It's not true. That's not, it's not that you can't build within 200 feet. It's that any activity within 200 feet has to you have to file for a permit which is a, a you have to file a notice of intent with the conservation commission detailing the work and then the commission issues a permit under which you um under which the work with conditions under which the work is done and that i if john correct me if i'm wrong here but something like that this is already covered under the Wetlands Protection Act. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that, 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 that appeal is... would go to DEP. So that's what we're not. Oh, I asking... thought we were. I thought we were doubling the uh, setbacks. No, from nope. the from the state. No. So the state nope. is 100 feet and 200 feet now. Yeah, 200 feet for rivers, and that's federal. Right. That's yeah. That's, that's and a river. 100. Right, that's the Rivers Protection Act, and that's a federal um, law. Yeah. And then the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act is a hundred feet from wetlands and um, 
And uh, so the only thing that we're adding is 100 feet from intermittent streams. But 100 feet from wetlands is already the law. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't change that. Right. Or double it. No, we didn't. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yep. And what about um, like man-made wetlands? If, it, if so. it's a wetland, if it has hydric soils, which is real. So the science behind determining wetlands isn't, is that part of the grass squishy? It's you, you hire a wetlands scientist and they take core samples of the soil and soil that is perpetually wet the organic matter doesn't degrade in the same way. So the color of the soil is different. Um, <clears throat> so they take core samples and they tell by the color of the soil, whether it's hydric soils or not. And they just keep coming out until they don't find hydric soils anymore. And that's the edge of the wetland. That and plant and species. species that are indicative of wetlands. But it's not just one or just the other, it's the two together. And so if there's been a, you know, drainage swales and pipes and ponds installed over the years on your no. property, you're saying. Right. Well. If they're agricultural, they're exempt. If they're if it's a farm pond, if it's agricultural um drainage or sprinklers or whatever um then they're exempt under the wpa and under this right but if, the, if they're installed for road drainage, for what for for road you know for managing uh stormwater off roads so there's a pipe put in the road oh that doesn't count on your property Are you now subject to i what don't think so no i don't think that i mean if there's Right. I mean, the stormwater regs are like stormwater regulation is like this. So yeah. that, um, but no, the, I mean, again, this wouldn't prohibit repair. It wouldn't prohibit like, um, I mean, I guess if you wanted to open the pond up and flood the town, somebody might have something to say about it, but um really 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 this is just to give us some additional tools some additional protections um you know the the town unfortunately bigger heavy hitters are co are coming and looking at the town and their interest is not in protecting the habitats that we have the um the environment, our wells, our stormwater management, you know, wetlands are important for flood control. Um, and they just want to come in and make money. So we need some additional tools now to have a little bit more strength behind the things that we can do, the, the ability to protect the things that we value in town. Without Carolyn, being, can you switch without me over? Heavy, to, yep, to without the, being heavy-handed. Yeah. Um, what do you want, John? I'm, I, I made it home. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you want to log out and log back in from your computer? I'm, I'm logged in. I can see you. Oh. You just. I need to promote you. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to sign off for this thing. All right. Whenever you're ready, you have to unmute mm -hmm. too. There you are. Earbuds. Can we hear you now? Yeah, 
I can hear you. There you go. We can hear you. Thanks for your patience. Hmm. All right. So what else, how else can I help explain? <laughs> I think it's pretty comprehensive. You know, I think that there's some fear from people that do develop in town that it's just another regulation running amok. Um, but yeah, and I really do hope to explain to people that that's not what this is about. You right. know, th this is not an anti-development bylaw. You know, um, it, it basically just complements the Wetland Protection Act and you know adds some stuff that really is quite useful um, in just allowing us to sort of both protect the environment and get our work done. Um, you know, you know, some of the stuff is a little wonky, like the 53G, you know, but one of our consultants suggested I put that in there, and so I did. Right. The thing you, you don't want to throttle is the, you know, the guy that's going to develop one, two, three houses every couple of years. Um, you know, the big boys are going to come in, they're going to fight no matter what, because they can, they have the money behind them, they're going to continue to do it, and they're going to continue to try to get away with as much as they can. Um, it's the little guys that, and I, and maybe that's something that we want to not have happen. But you know, the little guys don't have the wherewithal to be able to, if there's a issue or if there's something, you know, that's more than what makes it tenable for them. You know, then you you drive that development away. And I don't think that this. I know that the intent isn't there. Um, but I mean, that's a, that was one of the thoughts that I had. Right. So yeah. like, for example, the Crosby road development of those five houses, yep. one of those wouldn't be built. Right. So, uh, but you know, the other thing, Tom, is that, um, you know, even the smaller developers are familiar with the wetlands protection act, Sure. you know, and there's some building permit issues that I've, you know, work with people and you know they they understand what's going on and they're they're you know they they you know they they put up the erosion control barriers and they're familiar with it anyway right. so and so it, this really doesn't change what's that much what's already going on you know right. you know most you know people that come in with projects for instance already point out on their site plans a 25 foot no touch zone right. it's just that when it gets cantankerous do they want to violate it you know um so, it, because that's not unique. That's not like something that's, you know, that's- rep, right, 25 that, you know, is actually one of on the, the shorter the, distances. Yep, so there's 30, there's 50, and then there's, there's also multiple things. There's like a no touch and no build and no blah, 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 you know, no structure, you know, they, they, they'll, they'll have various diff, different uh, degradations. So 25 is pretty straightforward and not at all uncommon. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, similarly with protecting vertical pools, that's not uncommon either. Um, right. So, so the the builders that it would weed out are the people who are here to take advantage of our sure. of our lighter regulations than in other towns. So Correct. that makes us ripe for the picking. Right. So you know, let's put us on an even playing field with the other surrounding towns, and at least. Um, you know, give us a chance to not get overrun. Sure. <clears throat> I think for the little guys, the issue of how do you appeal it is important. Because right. They, so, yeah, yeah and absolutely. And I've definitely heard that. And like I said, John and I have been talking about how to um, make that better. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. that's my homework assignment for tomorrow. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, frankly, Jay, it might work out to be quicker. DEP is not quick with appeals. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. I thought they were. No? No, no not no, at no. all. We've got, Six we're months? still, we're awaiting yeah. two decisions from the fall still. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. not, they're not. Now, to be fair, I think it, they're not, they're just understaffed. Um, sure. 
but yeah, they're, they're not quick. So um, some sort of like cooperative arbitration or whatever we come up with would probably be quicker. So yeah, but again, I did, it's on my to-do list for tomorrow. It, it might be interesting to see a chart that shows half a dozen towns around us and how they compare on some of the key elements. Yep, can do that. Because th that's the argument I often hear and I don't know how to respond to it is that, oh, here we go. You know, we're making stuff tougher than everybody else around. and. I'm not convinced that that's the case. And if there's a simple way with a chart to demonstrate that, then. Uh, well, it's definitely not the case because a lot of these surrounding towns have their own bylaws already. I mean, they yeah. have a bylaw. They already do have them. Right. Um, I just I, as far as the no setback, I believe Bolton is 35 feet. Um, do you guys want to pick the towns for the chart and want me to pick them? Well, I mean, Boylston, Bolton, Harvard. Lancaster. Lancaster. I mean, I suppose Northborough and Hudson and, you know, they're, they're really want to use Northborough? I would. Northborough's similar enough to us. Yeah. Yeah. They have one. So, and they're nice people. I like the Northborough people. I mean, they're only, what, 15,000 people. So, I mean, they're bigger, certainly, but they're not overwhelmingly bigger. There's lot sizes are a lot smaller. Yeah. But I mean, it'd be interesting to see uh, well, how that stacks up. Because you're going to need to have that for people to make up their minds and vote. If you want them to vote the positive, then you got to kind of lead them down the path. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I think those that's good advice. All right. So now I got two homework assignments. What would you like the planning board to do? I'm sorry, Tom, I, I missed that. What was that? Hey, no worries. What would you like the planning board to help you with? Passing the word along. I mean, basically, um, I want people that are nervous to contact us so we can talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, right. you know that's non, what we want. In non-COVID times, you know, we'd hold a couple of, we'd go to, you know, Wednesday morning coffee, we'd go here, we'd go there, we'd hold, right. you know, open hearings. Um, and we're still planning on doing some sort of open forum, but it's just thing. so much harder to get yeah. the word out um, right now. And you can't serve donuts. And you can't even serve donuts or cookies. Maybe a packaged. Yeah, right. <laughs> Put them in the mail. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the Conservation Commission can't condone that. Individually packaged, packaged snacks. Donut? Yeah. <laughs> Next, you want water bottles too. Yeah, plastic bags. <laughs> right? Recyclable. Yeah. So, yeah, no, just like if people are nervous, have them contact us. You know? And, you know, if, if the board would like to, sub, to voice their support at town meeting, if the support is there, that would certainly be wonderful, but. Um, Wouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. I think we can muster that up. Thank you. It'll probably be on Zoom, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm hopeful. I think they could probably, well, certainly they had an outside one last year. And right. uh, I think by June, things are going to be much, much better. Get your vaccine. This from a doctor, so. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you can find the vaccine, you can take it. Right. So um, a bulletin came out today. People over 75, you can sign up now to get, get it in February. I'm over um, 75. Well, there you go. Sign up. <laughs> well, Janet, you want me to forward you? I might still have your email, Janet. I could forward you the thing from the Board of Registration of Medicine. Oh, okay, um, good. And... So, uh, and then, you know, after, after that, it'll be other stuff. And they already have some, if you have comorbid conditions, you could probably sneak in that line too. But right. um, stage four plus cancer, 
two autoimmune diseases and asthma. Yeah, you should you should have already had yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I, Janet, I'll forward that to you when we Thank hang you. up. Yep. So. Um, but I want to know, right. John, is where do you get the antibody drugs? The the what? The two. There's two uh, antibody drugs. One's a cocktail. Oh yeah. That are oh the monoclonal. That's if you're sick. That's yeah. You get those. You need, to, you need to get them early. You need to get them early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know who has them. Well, UMass. I mean, I, I believe. Um, but uh, I'm not an <laughs> not an infectious disease expert. Just to be clear. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I advocate people get the vaccine. So I get my second one next Wednesday. So a week from tomorrow. My wife got her second one last night. Or yesterday afternoon. So, and you know, she did have some side effects, but she just still walked. Second one more than the first. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I hear. That's, yeah. Yep. It's still better yeah, than getting COVID 19, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn they're not pleasant, but they're not. I mean, COVID 19 might be trivial or it, and it might be deadly, but there's a lot of intermediate where there's some very unpleasant illness associated with it. Oh, man. Um, my nose still know. doesn't work right know. there's a ton that we don't yeah. know you know yeah. there's they're, they're talking about now that there's some uh lingering mental health problems that are coming out how can you um, distinguish them stuff like that <laughs> yeah no there's it, it, <laughs> no anyway well i am starving so i'm gonna go eat a lot of food right now um <laughs> after i email janet so, um, but if, if you guys have any questions, please feel to, free to contact us and spread the word out and encourage people to contact us. And thank you very much for the invitation. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Good night. Good, Good night, night John. I'll talk to you. Cool. Well, that's about all that I had on the agenda. There is, um, we do have, um, an opportunity if somebody has anything that they want to bring up for a timely action. So if anybody has anything they want to report or they want to chat about something or whatever, now's the time. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask Carolyn a, a quick question? Carolyn, did you email me the, the link this time? Um, I think uh, Leanne emailed the link. Yeah. Who did? Leanne. Leanne. So it would come from the inspector's office. Is oh, the okay. the name? Inspection department. I, I think, think is I actually. One. Yeah. Yeah, she's when I give her the agenda, which I have to do the Thursday before our meeting, um, so she can post it. She usually sends her on the link at that time. She tells me that it's been posted and then the link is provided for okay. jumping on. The only way I got it was getting it off of Tim's notice. Yeah, the other way you can, if you go to um, town of Berlin, uh, what the uh, town of Berlin dot com, um, you can get it at the planning board agenda. So they have the, really? all the agendas okay. are listed. Yep. Yeah, and, I think you can also get it on my town government. You can get it on my town government too. Yeah. Now, you expect an 80 year old to remember those three things in a row? <laughs> I can't remember well, my name most days. Or if on that day you look for it and you can't find it, just let one of us know and we'll yeah. forward it to you. Okay. All right. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. And I need to call, I can find my paper. Just by roll call. So motion is made and seconded <laughs> during the meeting. Oh. That's so cool. So I'm cleaning the house. And I Let's find this 1974 issue of World Magazine that got started in uh, 1972 by Norman Cousins. And it's it it speculates on what's going to happen in 2024. Wow. Andre Sokol, 
um, Sakharov, Werner von Braun, Isaac Asimov, Jacques Cousteau, Neil Armstrong, Kurt Waldheim, Claire Booth Luce, Norman Cousins, great McGeorge Bundy. So I just started reading it. It, it. One of the first things that caught my eye was a projection that there still would not be a woman president. Huh. But Neil okay. Armstrong, Neil Armstrong <laughs> projected that the moon would have been so well explored by now that it would be invaded by rock hounds and people just <laughs> sort of wandering around. <laughs> because we'd understand every little nook and cranny so well it, it could be turned loose to the to the mishmash so huh. he well if, the, cha if challenger hadn't happened who knows yeah. how right he would be yeah. yeah but anyway it was i'm having fun interesting that's awesome hi okay jay teach hi carolyn mcdonald hi Anna campbell hi tom sanford hi Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you all.